Hey guys, it's Kadroth again. Today we are going to be going over the Berserker node for Ketsmith. So uh, we will be covering a lot of comps in this one. This one's going to be a little bit longer than normal because we wanted to go a little bit wider. So just keep that in mind and bear with us. Also, guys, feel free to check me out on Twitch weeknights, uh, Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern time. I always stream FGO to begin with, so feel free to come check me out then. And let's get right in. And just another note here, we will be doing the Lancelot and Dante's comps in another video as always, but uh, we don't really recommend using Lancelot for this node because it's Berserker on Berserker. So we will be covering that, just keep that in mind. Okay, so for this first comp guys, we're gonna be working with a Nidocris Artoria Merlin Waver comp here. Artoria is gonna be really nice for this node just in general, as you guys have seen in other Lancer type nodes in the past, just because she has charge in her kit. So she's very good for going back to back NPs, especially with that refund on the back end. Nidocris is gonna be very easy to use on this node in general due to the fact that it's all Berserker. So she's actually effective here. As you guys can see, even NP1 is putting in work with only 4k remaining at the worst on the gemstone there. That's not gonna be a problem for anyone to card out. You are gonna be looking at a little bit of some hefty health pools left on the Spriggan and Beowulf at the end, but remember guys, it's Berserker, so everyone's effective. Also, the problem with the Berserker node is that health pools tend to be inflated a little bit on this one just due to the fact that everybody is effective. So they understand that your casters that are supporting you are going to be able to be used in cards, and I think they adjust for it accordingly. We can also substitute a waiver for a Scotty in this comp. Otherwise, the requirements are pretty standard. It's going to be just tin tins on your support casters as well as your Artoria. You're really going to want her tin 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 across the board for this. Yes, you can probably get away with less on everything other than the charge skill if you're using np3 but for np2 this is kind of the base minimum that we wanted to calculate also just remember because of the possibility that we can include scotty instead of waiver we've built it so that merlin's charisma is going to get used first and not waivers that does have an impact on calculations for turn two so just keep that in mind for our turn order, we're going to start out with the front line of Nidocris, Artoria, and Merlin. You guys are going to go ahead and use Nidocris's middle skill. You can use the first skill if you want, but I don't think you'll need it, and I don't think it'll be worth it most of the time since you can clear 40%. You're going to go ahead and pop Merlin's attack skill as well as Artoria's attack skill here. That should give Nidocris the needed boost to be able to clear easily and go ahead and NP and wipe out the first wave. So then on turn two, you guys are going to go ahead and use Merlin's buster up on Artoria. You're going to go ahead and swap that Nidocris out for Waver as well, or the Scotty if you're planning to bring them in. At this point, Artoria is already at full, so just go ahead and NP, and you should be good here. She should be able to leave the Spriggan with 17k at most, and even clear it 8% of the time. So it's a pretty decent shot at killing, like we talked about. You are going to get stars coming in on that turn as well with the plug suit rotation, so I think you guys will be fine. So then in turn three, now you guys are going to use Artoria's charge skill she'll have refunded herself 20 percent already so that'll put her at 50. you'll use all of the waiver or scotty skills here on artoria that'll get her up to 100 percent charge and then from there you're gonna go ahead and use the plug suit attack buff and artoria's own buster buff go ahead and mp and you'll wipe out beowulf 67 percent of the time leaving him with at most 12k again another easily cardable range there Okay, now for this comp, guys, we're going to be using Gilgamesh. This is going to be an NP2 gill required with only a normal K-scope. The downside is because of that, we have to use double Waver or Waver Scotty. We cannot get away with Merlin because for that, you would have to be using Super Scope, which is obviously an option that'll drastically increase damage output, but, but... That is a way whalier comp, so we're going to try and recommend this because it's easier. Now, as you guys can see, NP1 Nito is still quite capable of clearing the front wave, and at NP2, Gil is really solid here as he has trait advantage over Beowulf as well as trait advantage over a Spriggan here. And what I mean when I say trait advantage over Beowulf, that's the servant bonus that he gets versus the Spriggan here. He actually has the trait advantage over in terms of Earth, Man, Sky, and all that. This entire node should be relatively easy for him i don't see any real problem so he's going to be doing really good for this just to walk you guys through the turn order we're going to start out with nito chris gilgamesh and waver on the front line you're going to start by using waver's third skill that's going to bring gil to 90 percent you're going to use gil's charisma as well that's going to give nito chris quite the oomph necessary here and then you're going to use nito chris's charge skill 
And the worst case scenario is you end up with 315 health remaining on the gemstone with it being cleared automatically 96% of the time. And due to death procs, it'll probably be even more than that. So Nidacris will be really nice in this comp for clearing it even at NP1. So that'll be the first wave down. So now on turn two, you're going to go ahead and swap out your Nidacris for the second waiver. Obviously, you would have to adjust accordingly had you been using Scotty here. And that means that you would have had to have popped both the waiver skills on wave one there for a single waiver, single Scotty comp. But in this case, we're going to bring that other waiver in and we're going to have him use his skill three here on Gilgamesh and that'll bring him up to full charge at that point. Now you can just go ahead and NP here with Gil because there's nothing else to do. He should easily mop up this node in this comp with the Spriggan dying 100% of the time. Now, as we enter into turn three here, Gil is going to pop his third skill. That's his charge skill. So make sure you guys have the upgrade done for him. That'll give him 30%. And then you're going to pop both the other waivers remaining skills. That will be a good 70% charge right there for him. So that should be just enough to get him out of there and allow him to get back to 100%. So from there, just pop your plug suit and you should be good. All right, now this comp is going to be an Ishtar Merlin waiver comp with Nidocris on the front line. And as you guys can see, this one's very similar to the Gilgamesh comp. We're actually able to get away with Merlin instead. And the reason for that is 20% more charge in her kit that she has that Gil doesn't. So otherwise it should function basically the same where Gil would have more advantage over a enemy servant. Ishtar should have more advantage over the Spriggan and stuff in the second wave. So it just boils down to what exactly it is that you're fighting when it comes to these two. Everything should be fairly straightforward. The same assumptions at play here, just an NP1 Nito, an NP2 Ishtar for this, a normal K-scope and Merlin waiver skills at 10 to help you out. But again, as you guys can see, there's really not gonna be too hefty of a max health remaining. On some other nodes, we might balk at the amount of health here, but again, because of the fact that this is all Berserkers, everybody's effective, including your support casters, I don't think it'll be too hard to card out this amount. So for the skill order on this one, we're gonna start out with the front line of Nidocris, Ishtar, and Merlin. And remember, because of the fact that we can substitute a Scotty in, we're going to put Merlin in on the front because even though his charisma would be less than, say, waivers, we're going to build it this way to help out anyone that has Scotty. Again, all of our numbers are calculated this way, so we'll start out with that front line. You can go ahead and pop your charge skill on Nidocris here to begin. You can do the first skill on her, you just don't really need to. From there, you can use Merlin's attack up that'll bring Ishtar to full charge herself. You can use Ishtar first skill her charisma and then you should be able to go ahead and np with the gemstone dying 60 percent of the time and at worst only having 3k remaining which is a card from anyone now on turn two you guys are going to make sure you go ahead and swap out that nito chris for waiver or scotty whoever you're using and then take merlin's buster buff and go ahead and pop that on ishtar now make sure you guys use ishtar's third skill here that is her delayed attack buff if you don't use it you're going to be shafted for the third wave at this point you can go ahead and NP and you should be fine leaving the Spriggan with at most 14k and killing it 27% of the time. And now here on wave three, you guys are going to go ahead and have Ishtar's charge skill to pop. That'll get her up to 50%. Use all of the waiver or Scotty skills on Ishtar to get her to 100% and then go ahead and use the plug suit attack buff and you're good to go. Go ahead and NP and Beowulf will die 51% of the time outright to the NP. The other 49% he's going to live with at most around 17 Okay, so again, another easily cardable situation for you. All right, so for this one, guys, we're gonna be using Jailter, AKA John Alter, Santa, Lily. You guys might be staring at this one right now and being like, holy crap, that is a lot of damage. And yeah, there's a reason why she's actually damage bonus in this event. So she's a really good unit for you guys to use. She is welfare. And for that reason alone, she's a highly recommendable comp here for Buster. You guys should be guaranteed to have NP5 of her if you played the prior event. Again, I think you guys can see just using an NP1 Nito and double waiver. Double waiver is probably gonna be the biggest constraint about this, but you can mix in a Scotty. So still not that huge of a constraint. You just need one of those two units to be able to do this. So this should be a highly, highly doable comp for just about everybody. Talking about the max health remaining, wave one is not going to be a problem. Wave two here where the Spriggan is going to be a problem. And as you guys can see, the only problem here is that she is being countered by the Spriggan. And unfortunately in this one, this is the downside to this because Jailter only has 20% charge and not 50% like say an Ishtar or something. We don't get 
get the benefit of being able to use Merlin. So that is going to be a downside to this comp is we have to run either double Scotty or Waver. I would also advise you maybe, and I don't know because I didn't run the calculation, she is counter traded by Beowulf as well here, but you might be able to get away with if you're running Scotty the defense down in wave two to help you kill this rather than throwing it in wave three. But be very, very careful with that. You guys are gonna have to test that one yourselves. Again, I think this should be a very doable and approachable comp for just about everybody. So for our skill order here, you guys are gonna start out with a front wave of Nidocris, Jailter, and Waver. You're gonna go ahead and use Waver's third skill here, and then Nidocris's charge skill. You don't need Nidocris's first skill to rely on death here. So should be able to go ahead and NP there and wipe out the front wave with the gemstone dying only 8% of the time outright, but that's not including death proc, so you might get lucky. And then on top of that, at worst, she's only gonna have 6K remaining HP. It should be very easy to kill that front wave. So then on wave two, you guys are going to go ahead and swap out Nito Chris for the other waiver. This should bring in stars with him. So that should help you out here against the Spriggan needing to card that. And for that reason alone, I think you should be good. And remember, these are all berserkers. So all of your support casters and everything, they're all effective against it. So your card should go pretty far here. Just be careful because yes, in the grand scheme of things, you might somehow end up into a four turn, but you're going to go ahead and pop the other waivers skill three. That's his charisma up. And that should get Jelter to full charge charge here with double charismas and she's going to need that against the Spriggan so remember she's going to have 23k remaining here potentially on the Spriggan so go ahead and NP and see what you guys can do on turn three you guys can go ahead and use Jelter's battery that'll get her up to 20 percent you can use all the other waiver skills that should get her to 100 percent there with the 80 percent charge that they had remaining and then you can go ahead and pop Jelter's buster up the reason we had it at nine is because it is a very strong buster up it's a very big component of her damage I think even at rank 10 it goes up to 55 percent so it's a pretty big buster up skill so go ahead and do that use your plug suit attack buff and you guys should be good for wave three there Ah, uh, the waifu comp. I've been waiting on this one. So this one will be a difficult one, rather whaley one for a lot of you guys to handle because it's going to require MP3 of Lartoria. It's going to require Merlin and Waver. So this will be difficult for most people to pull off unless you're me and you have a MP5 grailed 2K Fode Super Lartoria to run around with. But for most of you guys, this will be a tough bar to meet. But if you can meet it, again, you guys can see here 15K remaining on the Spriggan there in wave two, which should be easily doable with cards and Beowulf there with 8k remaining and that should be even doable with possibly one card so it's really good odds on this the Spriggan is going to be your big concern in this though but due to the fact that Lartoria also has charisma this is really lowering the bar for Nito Chris necessary in fact she will clear 100% of the time now in this comp so this is a really really nice one here also we've built this one in again so that you guys can run Scotty in the comp in place of waiver just keep in mind if you do that the skill order is going to change a little bit but that is why we're going to be starting out with Merlin's charisma first rather than waivers because that's going to help people build Scotty in terms of instructions here so for the skill order, we're going to start out with the front line of Nidocris, Lartoria, and Merlin. You're going to go ahead and pop Merlin's attack skill, and that will get Lartoria up to full charge there. Then you're going to go ahead and pop Lartoria's attack skill, and that is going to give Nidocris even more oomph to handle this front wave. And then you're going to go ahead and pop Nidocris's charge skill, and then go ahead and NP, and at that point, you should 100% clear all the enemies. You don't even have to rely on Death Brock or anything, so it's fully automated at that point. As we end up in turn two, you guys want to make sure that you use Merlin's buster up skill on Lartoria. You guys can go ahead and swap out the Nita Chris for Waver here. With that will come Stars, which will help you be able to card against the Spriggan. And then go ahead and fire off that first NP with Lartoria. The Spriggan will die outright only 19% of the time, but the worst case scenario we're looking at is 15.3k remaining HP, especially with a Buster NP in the lead as well. From there, we're going to end up on turn three. You guys want to make sure that you use Lartoria's charge skill. That's going to bring her back to 70% on her own because of the fact that she refunds 20% on the back of her NP. And then from there, you can use the waiver skills to bring her up to full and then go ahead and use your plug suit attack buff and her buster buff and she should mop up the final wave with Beowulf dying cleanly 77% of the time. And otherwise you can only have at most 8K remaining. So 
she'll do wonderfully on this node with trade advantage against Beowulf. All right, now for this one, this is gonna be the last of our buster comps for this node that we're recommending. This is gonna be a Drake comp for this. Now, Drake doesn't have damage bonus, and that's why you guys are seeing us having to resort to NP3 Drake. We can get away with a normal K-scope, and we can get away with Merlin due to Drake's 50% charge. So that's really gonna help her out. The concerns is obviously going to be the health remaining here with 13K on the Spriggan. Should be pretty doable. She is just neutral traded against it. And then same thing with Beowulf, just neutral traded, but she does actually get 17K remaining here on this one. And the variance is a little bit more wild with half the time her clean killing, the other half the time she's gonna leave it alive. And the worst case is gonna be that 17K. So that's where the problem's gonna come in. However, on the third turn, you should be popping Drake's charge skill. So that'll get her some stars to help with that kill. And there also should be plug suit going out there to help the support casters as well have a little bit more oomph on their cards. So I think that one's gonna be doable still. Again, just another note, we can substitute a waiver for Scotty. Obviously, waiver is going to get preferred here due to the fact that he can cover Drake on both turns. Whereas if you're using Scotty, it's probably not going to be advisable because one of the two turns that you use the defense down will be fine. But the one that you don't is going to be in real trouble. OK, so for the turn order here, we're going to start out with a front line of waiver, Nito, Chris and Drake. You guys are going to go ahead and use waiver first here with his second and third skills getting popped to bring Drake up to full charge. Again, this is a reason we don't really recommend Scotty here and recommend Waver instead. This is kind of working backwards from normal, but trust us on this. So you're going to go ahead and pop those two skills. That'll bring Drake up to full. Go ahead and pop Nidocris's second skill. That'll bring her to full. And you should be good to go ahead and MP here. Again, you don't necessarily have to use the death skill. She's going to easily clear that first wave, but we did it in this order. Again, just give her a little bit more output here, even though it's kind of working backwards from how we normally do it. As we end up in wave two here, you guys are going to go ahead and plug suit out that Nito Chris and bring in Merlin and with him comes some crit stars at that point you guys are going to go ahead and use Merlin's third skill on Drake and then go ahead and NP she was already full from the prior wave you should easily kill the Spriggan 31% of the time with the rest of the time for leaving at most 13.4k that should be well within the cardable range with two cards remember these are berserkers so everyone's effective you will be getting more crit stars here as well you're going to end up in wave three at this point you guys can go ahead and pop Waver's remaining skill to get Drake to 30%. Go ahead and pop Merlin's remaining skill to get her to 50. Then pop Drake's own charge skill. Then go ahead and use the plug suit attack buff and Drake's Voyager of the Storm, her first skill. At that point, you can go ahead and fire off the last NP and she should easily kill Beowulf 51% of the time, only leaving 17k at most. But again, that should be easily within the cardable range considering we are getting a plug suit attack buff as well as crit stars from Drake's charge skill. Okay, so this is going to be our first of the quick comps. Again, we will be going over Lancelot and Dantes in another video. Just understand that Lancelot's really not going to work very well for this node because he is Berserker and Berserker on Berserker is not a really good matchup. Again, to talk to you guys about the Achilles comp here, as you guys are going to see in the caster node, Achilles is damage bonus as is Astolfo, and they're great options to use here. However, refund against Berserkers is a little bit on the weird side. So we have opted for utilizing a rash here to help out with the first wave however because of this we could have gone with refund however it would have required us to use a super scope and we felt like going with mlb aerial drive was a safer bet all of you guys should have that as a welfare ce rather than saying like hey we need you to have a k scope or hey we need you to have a super scope that starts getting really whaley for a lot of people but unfortunately we can't avoid all the whaliness as we have required you guys to have your own waiver and your own scotty for this comp you can run with double scotty waiver or you can run with double waiver scotty it does not matter double scotty waiver should be a little bit more damage output but ultimately they will perform well and so we opted for double waiver scotty because double waiver still clears everything 100 of the time so talking about the skill order for achilles this is where things get a little dicey the first thing i want to show you guys is that you need to structure your party accordingly because we're going to be not only using a plug suit to swap but we're also going to be using a rash who's going to change the party around so with that in mind we'll be plug suiting before a rash fires his mp off so you're going to be 
plug suiting the person with somebody in the fifth slot of your party. Your party will normally have a standard layout of the first three units and then the fourth unit and the fifth unit. So the fifth unit is going to be the one you're going to plug suit with because as you swap that, then a rash is going to nuke afterwards and bring in the next person in line and that'll be the fourth person that he brings in. So you don't want him to accidentally bring back the person that you plug suited out. So be very careful and make sure you set up the back line accordingly. The sixth slot doesn't matter, but make sure slot four is for a rash, slot five is for the plug suit swap. So with that in mind for our skill order, we're going to start out with a front line of a rash, Achilles, and the one Scotty that you have to have for this. So you're going to go ahead and use Scotty's charge on a rash. You're going to go ahead and use Scotty's quick up on Achilles. And then you're going to go ahead and use a rash's charge. From here, go ahead and plug suit out the Scotty for the waiver in your back line. And this is the waiver you've got to have. Make sure you pop waiver second and third skill. That will bring a rash up to 100% charge and it should bring Achilles to 70%. So go ahead and fire off a rash's MP. He will clear everything in the wave 100% of the time and you should be good. Now, on turn two, you're gonna go ahead and pop Achilles' own charge skill. That should be 30%. That will bring him up to 100%. You're getting the benefit of refund by doing this, so it works out. From here, go ahead and pop Achilles' quick up as well and use the second Scotty quick up that got brought in with a rash if you were using Scotty. If not, you've got waiver here and you shouldn't have to do anything else. Go ahead and fire off the NP with Achilles and he should hit to the tune of clearing everything completely and refund himself about 23%. Now we end up on turn three here. You're going to pop the waiver skill one. This is going to be the first waiver's 30% charge here. And then you're going to go ahead and pop the plug suit attack buff and all the remaining support caster skills, be it Scotty with her charge or the other waiver with all of his charge skills. And that should get Achilles up to full and you should be fine to go ahead and pop that plug suit attack buff like we talked about and fire off the NP and you're good. You should easily kill Beowulf. Also, just as a note here for you guys at the end, if you don't like the micromanaging of this comp, pay attention to the Astolfo comp for the next one. You can use that exact same comp with Achilles. It's just a Nito Chris variant that doesn't involve all the swapping. For those of you guys that were paying attention from the earlier Achilles comp, you can also use that comp with Astolfo. So again, these are kind of interchangeable, but we opted to show each one in a different light. This one is going to be Nito Chris Astolfo with Scotty and Waver. I believe you can substitute the other Waver for Scotty, but I don't recommend it because I think the numbers shown here include calculations for Waver's attack buff on Nidocris. It would just drop the amount of damage Nidocris was doing and make it a little bit less likely to clear because of that. So instead, I would say go ahead and do it this way. It should be relatively easy. It's not a very high bar. We only want NP1 Astolfo with MLB Aerial Drive at level 15 there. We want rank 9 and 10 skills on Astolfo respectively there for his stuff. You guys should be okay here in terms of overall requirement. The hardest part for most of you guys here is probably going to be having the waiver and or the Scotty. Now for the turn order and for those of you guys coming from the Achilles segment, Stolfo has 50% charge, Achilles has 30%. So you're going to have to mix up a little bit where some of these skills get used. Like if you were using waiver here, you would also have to pop another skill to get Achilles to charge for turn two, but don't worry about that for right now. So anyways, our front lineup is going to be Nito Chris, Stolfo, and waiver. So from here, you're going to want to go ahead and pop all of Waver's skills on Astolfo, pop Nito Chris's second skill. You don't necessarily have to pop the first unless you're using Scotty, then you probably would want to pop the first skill just for the additional death chance. But otherwise, you can go ahead and NP here with Nito Chris and you should be fine. Now, as we get to turn two, you want to plug suit that Nito Chris for Scotty. At this point in time, you're going to want to do the Scotty quick up on Astolfo. You should have already done the other Scotty quick up if you're using another Scotty, if you're just using Waver you've already done everything and go ahead and NP with Astolfo here. He should pretty much clean clear 70% of the time with the Spriggan living 30% of the time, but the worst case scenario is 6k health remaining and with all these buffs flying around, you guys should be fine for carding that. Now as we end up in turn three, you guys are going to want to go ahead and use the Scotty charge and defense reduction in this wave. Make sure you use the charge on Astolfo. Go ahead and use Astolfo's attack up and his own self charge, which gets him another 50%, so that should put him at max. And then use the plug suit attack buff. So go ahead and NP here and you should clean clear 57% of the time with the other 43% of the time leaving.
leaving Beowulf alive, but at most you're looking at 15k, and again, you should be okay here with Plug Suit adding to the additional carding power of this. Just bear in mind if you are worried about that, you can pre card with a Buster card or something ahead of Astolfo's Quick MP. That should give your later cards a little bit more oomph. It's just up to you depending on the NP level. If you're using a higher NP level of Astolfo, it should clear pretty easily. If you're using just NP1, you might want to consider doing that as a tactic. Okay, now guys, this is going to be the first of our Parvati comps for the Berserker node. We can actually get away with NP1 on this as opposed to later on down the line, it's looking like we're gonna need NP2. However, we are going to require a level six charge skill at minimum for Parvati just for safety purposes. It looks like you might be able to get away with as low as four, but we would rather just tell you guys to go to six, get that nice base even amount and skill cooldown reduction on it. That way you guys will be safe in case the calculations just vary here and there just a tad but again this is going to require super scope which is probably going to be the biggest barrier to entry for this comp and as you can see the max remaining health values are going to be a little bit on the worrisome side here especially in wave two and part of that is going to just be because of the fact that we're only getting that big boost from parvati's damage in the third wave with that second skill otherwise parvati is always going to have three turns of quick up and np gen so that's really going to help her out and make her consistent here the berserker note is going to be very rough to loop against for a lot of units and this one should work so we're actually going to be staggering the defense downs between the two waves there and that's going to give us a little bit more of an edge but if you're worried about this you guys can always try to use a higher NP level of Parvati but we think it should be doable just try to pay attention to the cards at play here remember guys in a quick comp you guys are going to be getting a lot of crit stars crits should abound and because these are berserkers everybody should be effective against Against them that way when you are worrying and you get that 24k max remaining you guys should be okay with either Parvati cards critting or even Scotty cards critting because you're going to be guaranteed that crit and even the Scotty card should be effective okay so for the turn order here we're going to start out with both the Scotties in the front line as well as Parvati you're going to do both the Scotty quick ups on Parvati and then use Parvati's first skill you also want to make sure you pop the 2004's NP generation skill there for your mystic code on Parvati and then go ahead and NP. She'll easily clear the first wave, almost doubling the amount of HP required. You should end up in wave two having enough refund there. So now in wave two, you guys are going to go ahead and use Scotty's charge skill on her and one of the Scotty defense downs. That should give her the amount that she needs to both get the damage output and refund required. Again, you won't ever clean clear the Spriggan, but you can go ahead and NP and worst case scenario, you're going to end up at 20 4k remaining hp you will be shitting crit stars the whole time so you should have a good chance at critting your way out of this even in that scenario as we get to wave three here you guys are going to go ahead and do the exact same thing again do the scotty charge skill that remains do the defense down that remains and then use parvati's second skill and her third skill on herself because you're going to need that for refund purposes then make sure you pop the fragment of 2004's np damage up skill on parvati and go ahead and go to town and you should kill beowulf cleanly 64% of the time and at most he's going to have around 13k remaining HP which again should be easily within that cardable range with all those crit stars. Okay, now we're gonna end up with the regular K-scope variant of the Parvati comp here. Again, this one should be a lot more approachable for you guys. However, the barrier to entry is gonna be the fact that you're gonna have to have your own waiver and your own Scotty on top of a support Scotty. This one's also gonna require NP2 as opposed to the NP1 on the super scope variant because NP1 just really didn't work. It left either too much damage on wave two or wave three and no amount of shifting the skills around really worked to help it make it consistent. You could risk it but at the end of the day that's going to rely on your ability to card count and how you play it so we're going to not recommend it if you think you can stretch it and get away with it go for it but again our advice is to go for at least np2 here and as you can see the max remaining health values at np2 are quite good both of those should be easily within the cardable range and you really shouldn't have to worry about it probably one card each at most again though i think this comp is going to be fairly stable and fairly solid for a lot of you guys now for the skill order here we're going to start out with a front line of Waver, Parvati, and Scotty. You're going to go ahead and use the Waver second and third skills to get Parvati to full charge. Use that one Scotty's quick up and use that first Parvati skill. Now go ahead and fire off your NP and easily kill the first wave, more than doubling the amount of health required. 
as we end up in wave two you're gonna want to pop that first waiver skill that 30 percent charge on parvati get her back up to about 50 percent there go ahead and swap that waiver out for the plug suit with the other scotty on the back line as that scotty comes in go ahead and use her quick up on parvati and then use one of the scotty's charge skills on parvati to get her to full go ahead and fire off your np here and you should be fine again maybe leaving the spriggan with at most 10k remaining but otherwise 51 percent of the time clean killing it as we end up in wave three you guys are going to go ahead and use that last remaining scotty charge skill on parvati go ahead and use parvati's second skill and then use her third skill on herself to get that extra charge needed to get her back up to full go ahead and use the plug suit attack up at this time and then go ahead and use the last remaining scotty defense down you should at least have room to use both here if you want but it's not going to be required due to the damage calculation so you only have to do one even using the two and splitting it it didn't make it enough but you can go ahead and fire off the np here and you should be fine again with beowulf getting clean killed 89 percent of the time and at worst leaving 4k remaining Okay, now guys, this is gonna be our aerial drive variant of the Parvati comp. Again, we're only gonna assume a level 15 aerial drive. The reason we use aerial drive, even though it's a buster CE technically, is because it is all attack scaling. It does have 50% charge, and it also has MP damage up on it. So it's a relatively good offensive craft essence that we can use that starts out at 50% charge that we know everybody should have due to the fact that it's a welfare from the recent rerun of Halloween. The barrier to entry with this one is gonna be the waiver double scotty that we're requiring which means having your own waiver and having your own scotty we're also requiring an mp2 parvati here again just because you can try to get away with np1 but it's not advisable especially for beowulf there on the end there's just no combination that should really make it work short of just card reliance but this should work out in most cases there's going to be a little bit of a caveat here we're actually going to use a defense down on wave one here because she's going to need it for refund purposes which is a little weird but this should work I think the only thing to note here is Beowulf. That should be your only concern there on wave three. He will die 68% of the time, but we're looking at a 11k remaining that should be killable with at least one card, possibly two, just depending on crit status. But again, in these quick comps, you should be guaranteed pretty much two additional crits out of your cards out of the back of the MP. For our turn order here, we're going to start out with a front line of Waver, Parvati, and one of the Scotties. You guys are going to go ahead and use all 50% of Waver's charge skills there on Parvati, get her up to full. Go ahead and swap that Waver out to the other Scotty. Use both Scotty's quick ups at this time on Parvati use Parvati's first skill and then use one of the defense downs like I said remember this is just for NP refund purposes again she should theoretically hit about 41% on the refund but she should be good there given the fact that she refunds herself 10% automatically off the back of her NP as you NP and kill that wave we should end up in wave two from there you guys are just going to need one Scotty charge skill and then you can go ahead and fire off the NP again she will refund quite a bit and then remember she's going to get an additional 10% due to her NP P passive you should be good there on the refund as we end up in wave three now you guys will have just the one scotty charge skill to use there as well as the plug suit attack buff but then you're also going to want to use parvati's second skill for damage output as well as parvati's third skill at that point in order to get enough charge to get her back to full and then go ahead and use the last remaining scotty defense down but from that point on you can go ahead and fire off the np but remember like i said you should easily kill with beowulf cleanly dying 68% of the time. We don't really recommend NP1 for this because we just don't think it'll refund enough. So NP2 here or bust is what we would say. Okay, guys, now this is going to be our Valkyrie version of the Super Scope comp for the Berserker node. Again, that's going to be the hugest barrier to entry there as having a Super Scope can require quite a bit of whaliness, but we only require NP2 of the Valkyries here. You'll have to have your own Scotty combined with a support Scotty as well as Fragment of 2004's Mystic Code there. But the only concern here really is going to be in Wave 2 with the Spriggan dying cleanly 64% of the time, only leaving 7.5k at most, so that should easily be within the cardable range. There is also a note here that you can probably put in work with np1 beowulf would only have 13k max however the big problem is the second wave can survive with up to 30k so if you're gonna try to make np1 work our recommendation would be to make sure you're on top of how to use your cards that you're on the up and up in that regard and are gonna be able to card
card count and make sure that you don't end up in a bad situation and use your defense downs accordingly. But for most people, we're going to recommend NP2 just for safety purposes. Now for the skill order here, we're going to start out with a front line of both the Scotties as well as the Valkyries. You guys are going to go ahead and pop both the Scotty quick ups on the Valkyries and then pop the Valkyries first and third skill, the third skill being the one that gives them 10% charge per turn. At that point, you guys can go ahead and fire off the NP and you should almost triple the amount of health needed in terms of damage there on the first wave and cleanly kill it all. Now as we end up in wave two, you guys are going to pop the Scotty charge skill here and then also the 2004's NP gen up skill normally we've been using that in the first wave but here you guys are going to want to use it on the second wave it's necessary for the np gain due to the spriggan having higher health here than the first wave you're going to want to make sure you get that there but you guys can go ahead and np here and you should easily kill the spriggan 64 percent of the time as at worst leaving it with 7.5k remaining there with a mineral now that we've ended up in wave three you guys are going to go ahead and use the last scotty charge skill then use the singular defense down with which the damage calculations use, but you guys can go ahead and use both if you want, just to be safe if you're using a lesser NP level here. And then you guys can go ahead and use the 2004 Mystic Codes NP damage up skill on the Valkyries and fire off that NP one more time. And again, you guys should cleanly kill Beowulf at NP2 100% of the time. Just be careful if you guys are using NP1. Okay, now this is going to be our normal K-scope variant of the Valkyrie comp here on the Berserker node. This one should be a lot easier to do than the Super Scope one, but we are still going to require np2 here the big barrier to entry is going to be having your own scotty and waiver that plus an additional scotty on support is going to be what's necessary to be able to loop in this entire node now we are going to be requiring 10x10 remember the third skill being the 10 percent charge per turn skill that the valkyries have it's going to be kind of necessary especially at np2 we are going to be using a defense down in wave two as well to help out with the np refund here because that's going to be the big concern against these berserker enemies is not going to be the damage output in most cases it's going to be the refund the good part about the valkyries is the fact that they're just guaranteed charge per turn as we get into the skill order here you guys can go ahead and start out with a front line of scotty and waver and the valkyries now you guys are going to want to go ahead and use the first scotty quick up skill on the valkyries go ahead and use the second and third skill of waver to get that 20 percent charge to get her up to full and then go ahead and use the valkyries first and third skills to make sure that they're dealing enough damage and refunding themselves Go ahead and fire off the NP at this point. You should cleanly kill the wave. Now, as we end up in wave two, you guys are going to want to use that first waiver 30% charge skill on the Valkyries. Go ahead and plug suit that waiver out and bring in the second Scotty. Go ahead and do the second Scotty's quick up skill on the Valkyries. <laughs> and then go ahead and use one of the Scotty charge skills on them to bring them up to full. At this point, use a defense down and then fire off your NP. Remember, we're using the defense down here in wave two for refund. It's not necessary for killing. So you should be fine here at this point, killing the Sprig in 100% of the time cleanly. As we end up in wave three, you guys are gonna use the last remaining Scotty charge skill, use the plug suit attack up and the last remaining defense down skill. At this point, fire off your NP and you should be good. Killing Bale wolf cleanly 56 percent of the time as well as only leaving him at worst with 15k should easily be within the cartable range especially with all the crit stars in this comp so you guys should be fine there you'll have a plug suit attack buff a defense down and a whole lot of crit stars to help you out special note again np1 is not recommended for this node that is because in the second wave there your refund is only going to be at np2 about 39.50 percent plus the 10 percent charge that they're getting on the that skill which gets us to exactly that 50% necessary if you're working with np1 it's just not going to be enough all right now this is going to be our last comp for the valkyries in the berserker node guys this is going to be the aerial drive variant you guys can stretch the damage output in these by leveling up the aerial drive even higher remember the reason we're recommending aerial drive as opposed to another craft essence is because even though it's buster centric it also has a lot of good stuff with its full attack scaling as well as the fact that it's got 50% charge and np damage up it's also a welfare ce from the Halloween rerun this year so it's something that we could rely upon that we knew just about everybody should have so that 
that's why the recommendation is here even if you maybe have another better option the big barrier to entry to this comp again is just going to be the fact that it's double scotty waiver which means having your own scotty and waiver and then taking a support scotty we're also going to be requiring np2 here for this one np1 will not refund enough just like with the prior comp with the k-scope and again that's going to be our big issue here is going to be the refund against these berserker enemies it's not necessarily going to be the damage output so we're requiring np2 for refund purposes here we're also requiring 10x10 not only for damage output but for the 10 percent charge per turn on that third skill is going to be really necessary in this case now there's not really going to be any major concerns here with Beowulf and the final wave being the only one who lives so I think we're good to go ahead and get into the skill order. Now for the skill order here guys you're going to start out with a front line of Waver, the Valkyries, and Scotty. You guys are going to want to use all of Waver's skills on the Valkyries here to bring them up to full charge. Go ahead and swap that Waver out with the plug suit to the other Scotty. As that Scotty comes in use both Scotty's quick ups on the Valkyries and then from there go ahead and pop your Valkyries first and third skill. It should get you every Thing you need so go ahead and fire off the NP at that point and you should easily overkill the front wave there as we end up in wave two we're gonna go ahead and use one of the Scotty charge skills to bring the Valkyries up to full and go ahead and use one of the defense downs here remember we're using this for refund so go ahead and fire off your NP and you'll kill the sprig in a hundred percent of the time cleanly but the refund here is theoretically just gonna be about 41 percent that's why we're requiring the defense down here is that additional 10 percent will bring them up to 51% but you're just barely above the cusp there so at that point we're going to end up in wave three and you guys can go ahead and use the last remaining Scotty charge skill from here use your plug suit attack up and the last remaining defense down and go ahead and fire the NP off and you'll clean kill Beowulf 94% of the time There's only 2100 HP remaining which is easily killable with one card Okay, and now we're getting into the arts comp series. As you guys can see, Anastasia is a great one for this. Again, you'll remember from the Assassin video that she has damage bonus in this event. So going up against the Berserker should be great for her. However, the problem is she's going to be counter traded by Beowulf, who is Earth and she is man. And she is also going to struggle against the Spriggan kind of for the same reasons. The damage bonus is what's making the difference here. We actually tried running a comp with Nero Caster and really NP5 even didn't quite do the job. So that's why we didn't even bother recommending her in this one, but Anna should work a lot better. The downside to this is Anna's going to struggle a little bit on refund because of the fact that it's Berserker. So just keep that in mind. So with this one, we're going to be running Paracelsus on the front line. We do recommend 1099 skills, mostly just because the latter two skills are going to help out Anna. The first skill is going to make Paracelsus usable with just a single waiver. That's kind of why, for those of you guys that are wondering about luring your Paracelsus, he is useful in several of these arts comps down the line. How the turn order is going to work here is we're going to start out with Paracelsus, Anastasia, and Waver in the front line. We're going to go ahead and use all of Paracelsus' skills on Anastasia. That should bring him up to 80% charge there. And then we're going to go ahead and use the Waver second and third skill to bring Paracelsus to full and Anna to full as well. Then you can go ahead and pop Anna's charisma skill here as it lasts three turns. And that should give Paracelsus the oomph he needs to be able to clear at least two of the enemies with the gym stone not having any chance to be cleanly cleared but only having 6.6k remaining hp from there you'll end up in turn two you guys can swap paracelsus out for tamamo pop tamamo skill three on anastasia and go ahead and go ham with the np she should kill the spriggan 90 percent of the time cleanly but for the times that she doesn't it'll only have 2.2k remaining about that's easily killable with one card she will refund about 44 percent from that which should be good now we're going to end up in turn three here and you guys can go ahead and use Anastasia's charge up to get her to about 90% and then pop Waver's first skill to give her the extra charge that she needs. From there go ahead and pop the plug suit attack buff, pop Anastasia's arts up and go ahead and nuke it. Beowulf will die cleanly 27% of the time but otherwise the max remaining health on him is going to be 24k. That's going to be kind of rough so keep that in mind though her NP does apply defense down to the target so you will have an extra chance really to help kill and remember you've got plug suit working on your side as well just pay attention a true mineral on this comp could cause you some issues you can squeeze out a little bit more with a super scope or a higher np level of anastasia or higher skill levels as we did only recommend the rank 8 skills on anastasia as well just like in the assassin comp so you guys can squeeze a little bit more out of this if you want 
Okay, so now we get into the last of the arts comps here, and as you guys can see, Hokusai is going to be another decent option because Hokusai has damage bonus in the event. However, the issue at play here is Hokusai is man traded, and we're facing earth traded enemies again, so both the Spriggan and Beowulf are both going to have issues here with Hokusai dealing less damage against them than she is the enemies alongside them. Unfortunately, those are the enemies you need to do more damage against, so that's kind of the bad part here. The good news is, again, this is going to work pretty cleanly with an NP1 Nido Chris. We did have a comp as well that worked with Paracelsus. It's just slightly different, but that'll look more like the Paracelsus comp that you guys saw in one of the other videos there with Tamamo and Waver and everything. But essentially, here's what we're recommending is an MP2 Hokusai, an NP1 Nido Chris, double Waver, and this should work. It's just single case go. Hokusai does have 30% charge in her kit as well to help you out. We're also not recommending any level on the third skill on Hokusai, but I'm going to say that most of you guys are going to have that leveled up to help you out because what that skill does is it allows her whenever she hits an enemy with an arts attack it applies defense down to them so having that at a higher level is going to help you with carding here and you may find some strategies here on this middle wave that seems to be particularly problematic for her where you could say pop that third skill then do two arts cards then her NP and then her extra attack and with each attack she'd be able to hit it harder due to the defense down stacking on the enemy she's a little bit of a weird one and one of the few scenarios where you guys might some sometimes want to card before the NP rather than after if you get that arts card. So it'll make the NP hit a little bit harder and help you out here. So for our skill order here, we're going to be starting out with Nido Chris Hokusai and Waver in the front line. You're going to want to go ahead and pop Waver's attack up skill, his third skill there. And that should give Nido Chris the oomph she needs. So go ahead and use Nido Chris's charge here and go ahead and NP. You shouldn't have to pop Nido Chris's first skill because she should be able to take care of the wave pretty cleanly. She'll only outright kill the gemstone 80% of the time, but she will at most most leave it with 6k health remaining which is easily cardable for all these units from there we're going to end up in turn two you can swap nido chris for waiver here and bring in the second one go ahead and pop his skill three that should bring hokusai to full that also brought stars with him that'll help for carding here since we're going to need it and then from there you guys can pop hokusai second and third skill like we talked about getting both the arts up as well as the defense down she should np now and she won't be able to outright kill the spriggan at all but at most most it's going to live with about 20k remaining. That's a little bit rough on the carding, but again, with all the attack buffs flying around, you should be okay. I'm going to go ahead and say that she'll refund around 18 to 20%. Hopefully that is enough for you. And from here, we're going to end up in turn three. So you're going to use all of the remaining charge skills for waiver. Both of them combined should still have 40% each in their deck. So that's 80% charge there. Hokusai refunds 18% on her own as well. And plus the 30% charge that Hokusai has in her kit you should be fine so you can probably get away with a little bit less than a rank 10 charge skill on hokusai but still advisable for future purposes as well go ahead and do that pop the plug suit attack buff and you should be good to go and go ahead and np and she will clear beowulf 100 of the time Oof, that was a long one thank you guys for watching for those of you guys that stuck around to the end i appreciate you Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. It does help out the video. You can also follow me on Twitter and join the Discord if you guys want to become part of the community. Just make sure you go up to that channel right at the very top and assign yourself a role. Otherwise, the server will kick you. I see it happen to a lot of people all the time. So please make sure you do that before you log out. And again, guys, I'll see you guys for the next one. So have a good day.